Welcome and thank you for joining me here today. Today is our inaugural interview with the researcher behind the images that you voted for in our imaging competition. We hope that we'll be able to give you a little bit of knowledge about a variety of subjects throughout this series and I'll be talking to our winners throughout the year. Thank you for agreeing to join us here today. Um, for the benefit of the video, my name is Jessica Anania. I'm based at the University of Southampton, where I'm a postdoc, and I am part of the Communications and Memberships Committee for the Antibody Society. So it is lovely to have you here as the winner of our calendar for 2024. And I hope that you yourself will be provided with a hard copy and that our members will be able to pick them up at conferences around the place. And you are our beautiful front cover. So would you like to introduce yourself, Federica, and tell us a little bit about your research? Yes, um, so I, my name is Federica Riccio and uh, um, I am actually now a postdoc. I just finished my PhD. Uh, Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I finished my PhD in May um, and uh, yeah, I work at King's College London and my PhD research was funded by the Wellcome Trust. Um, I'm still at King's now, uh, trying to get the last few experiments done. Um, <laughs> it's always the way. Take yes. us through the research behind the image, uh, which is an absolutely fantastic image. We had a brilliant turnout from our members uh, in voting for who we thought was the best image submitted in the competition. And I cannot argue, it's an absolutely stunning picture that we ended up with. So Thanks. can you take us behind the, you, you titled it Surrounded. So um, go through what that means and how exactly you obtained the image. Yeah, so um, I thought Surrounded was an appropriate title uh, for this lonely little neuron surrounded by astrocytes. Um, yeah, the image was just acquired using a normal confocal microscope. And um, uh, this is when we were testing, first testing our co-cultures of neurons with uh, primary astrocytes. And um, so we were just staining for, you know, both the neurons and the astrocytes just to make sure yeah. that everything looked right and the, the, the culture looked healthy. Um, so this is what you see. Um, there are a lot more neurons in this culture, but, but uh, this looks particularly nice. <laughs> yes, is is more for aesthetics than for reproducibility. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It was it was really just um, it looked really nice and it made for a, for a nice image. Yeah, oh, it's gorgeous. So these are cultured cells. What are you working on in, in terms of what is this actually used for as, in terms of research? Yeah, so for my for my PhD work, uh, work we um, we were working on, as the title says, m modeling Dravet syndrome uh, using human IPSC derived neural circuits. Yeah, uh, so I'll, I'll I'll tell you a little bit about Dravet syndrome and oh, and brilliant with it. Um, just uh, not nothing too detailed, but um, br uh, briefly, Dravet syndrome is a rare form of genetic epilepsy and is caused by loss of function mutations of the voltage-gated sodium channel NAV1.1. Uh, these uh, NAV1.1 channels are predominantly found in GABAergic inhibitory interneurons, where the loss of function of these channels severely affects the function of the interneurons. And uh, this is thought to explain the pathophysiology of the disease. Basically, in healthy neuronal networks, uh, inhibitory interneurons regulate the activity of nearby excitatory neurons in order to maintain physiological network balance. Uh, but if the function of the neurons is compromised, like in Dravet syndrome, the interneurons can no longer regulate the activity of the excitatory neurons, and this results uh, in uh, network hyperactivity and hypersynchrony that ultimately is responsible for the seizure events. Um, so this is the idea behind the mechanism of, of the disease. Uh, however, recently some studies have, uh, are suggesting that the excitatory neurons are not only playing a secondary role, but uh, they are instead playing an active role. They are actively involved in generating the disease phenotype. Okay. So, Interesting. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so with my project, we 
we were trying to understand a bit better the role of excitatory neurons in the pathophysiology of Dravet syndrome. Uh, so the aim of my work was to generate a novel human IVSC based model for Dravet syndrome. Uh, specifically, we take human, uh, human induced pluripotent stem cells that are um, that have been reprogrammed from fibroblasts that have been obtained from healthy donors and Dravet patients. And we differentiate these stem cells into excitatory cortical neurons and inhibitory interneurons. And ultimately, we combine them together with primary astrocytes to generate an in vitro co-culture model uh, to study Dravet syndrome. With um, specifically to generate our co-culture, we use the human cortex cell type ratio of 70% excitatory neurons and 30% inhibitory interneurons. And you can see here an, an image of our co-culture with the excitatory neurons in green and the inhibitory interneurons in red. Uh, obviously, we confirmed that we could obtain this ratio and also maintain it over long-term cultures. Um, we have cultures up to six weeks. Uh, but yeah, so this is the, the, the model uh, that is at the base of my project. And then using this system, we are now using a variety of different techniques and approaches to study the behavior of both uh, neuronal populations. Uh, we initially used immunocytochemistry to confirm the identity of the neuronal populations. Um, we're now using immunolabeling to look at the number and distribution of different synaptic markers. Uh, but we also used other techniques uh, like electrophysiology to um, characterize the intrinsic excitability and the firing uh, properties of these neurons. Uh, we used calcium imaging to, to look at uh, network activity as a whole. Um, we're also using transcriptomics to try to understand a bit more about the molecular mechanism um, that determines the disease phenotype. And um, yeah, this is uh, the, the idea behind my project. No, that's wonderful. Thank you for taking us through it. It sounds like uh, you looked at a wide variety and a lot of imaging based in that. Was that all using confocal imaging? Um, the immunocytochemistry, yes. Uh, different types of confocal microscopes. And for the calcium imaging, we actually use, because it's live imaging, we try to use a faster microscope. So we use a spinning disc um, specifically, but yeah. Okay, no, brilliant. That's that's really cool. So I guess the one thing that I have to ask being from the Antibody Society is how do antibodies come into your research? Uh, yeah, so we use actually antibodies uh, for a few different things. As I mentioned at the very beginning of my project, um, we we used antibodies to, to uh, stain our cultures and check that we were actually getting, um, you know, the right cell types. When you differentiate stem cells, you're never quite sure what you're getting. Uh, yes. So, <laughs> so you need to confirm that you're getting neurons and that the neurons are the right type of neurons, so they express the right, um, you know, um, markers, specifically for excitatory and inhibitory neurons. Uh, so we did that initially. Um, we also used... Um, it's a technique that we were using at the beginning of my project, but then um, we decided to go another way. But we were also using antibodies for max sorting, so for magnetic oh, yes. activated cell sorting. Um, that's actually a technique that is really commonly used in my lab to, to sort specific uh, neuronal populations from, from a generic um, population of cells. Yes. Um, and then more recently, we are using intrabodies, actually. Oh, wow, uh, cool. Yeah, we are trying to, it's a system that has been used in uh, in vivo, in mouse and in primary neuronal cultures before, but not in human cells. So we're trying to get the system to work uh, in our new human cells to label, specifically we want to label excitatory synapses and inhibitory synapses in the same neurons so that okay. we can get the ratio and distribution of, of them. Oh, brilliant. So how would that differ from what you've used for the, the image, for example, that we have on the screen now? Yeah, so the only difference is that, um, so if you just use uh, antibodies to, to stain for synapses, you will stain everything you have in your... Yeah. In your and that makes it really difficult to then assign specific synapses to a specific um, neuron. It just yes. makes it difficult to trace the entire neuron because everything is labeled. So using intrabodies that are transfected, um, we're really hoping to have a sparse labeling that allows mm -hmm. us 
have only a few uh, labeled neurons within the dish that we can follow all the way through from the dendrites to the end of the axon and really uh, look at the, as I said, number and, and distribution of, of these synapses. No, oh, that's brilliant. It's amazing what uh, you're capable of doing with antibody technology nowadays. Thank you so much, Federica, for taking us through your research. I hope you all enjoyed this inaugural uh, meeting the researcher behind the image. On behalf of the Antibody Society, I'd like to thank you all for your support and to all of our fabulous sponsors as well.